Right, I think I've woken up sufficiently now, everybody, so my words have come back to me, I hope, and hopefully they will flow like gentle water, unlike the uh, sort of truncated rapids that came out this morning. Here we go. The lions are eating, obviously. They seem to be very comfortable eating, and I haven't spent much time around them for the last little while because I've been in the tent looking at small things under the microscope and so it's very nice to spend a bit of time with the Ninkapuma pride and especially with these cubs having watched their development from birth and I was editing a little video together which I shall post shortly of when we first found the three little teddies now if you've just joined us the three little teddies are the three youngest cubs one of whom I think was lost during the white muscle disease uh, day barkle as it were I'll tell you a bit about that la um, a bit later but we've watched those three little things from probably about a week old and we found them just north of Biffleshook Dam which is in the northeast corner of Juma and they were in a dry water course under a fallen knob thorn tree and that's where mum had kept them she was the youngest lioness and she had kept them in there and that's where she birthed them and we watched them from there to this point and that was in July I think it was early July is that correct the oldest ones are born in mid-May yeah so very early July and it's just been fascinating to watch them develop from these tiny little fat fur balls into young lions and as Brian was saying to me as we watch them here they're starting to sound like lions now no more they're making that desperately cute sound that lions make ow, 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 which for me is one of the best sounds out here and what makes lions my cutest they get my vote as the cutest animal out here they've lost that cuteness now they're starting to look like young lions and what a pleasure it's been to watch them grow That little thing is looking at a vulture that's flying around the place. The vultures won't be flying yet. I think what's happened is that there are a few in the trees who would have seen this kill yesterday and came and settled for the evening. And now they'll just sort of fly around the immediate area. But they won't be up in the sky looking for kills just yet. These chaps obviously came in yesterday. There we go. You see? Hello Michael, an interesting question from you and I think um, you've probably answered it yourself but you just haven't realised it. You say, because the fewer males survive to adulthood, is there a ratio that, I've lost the word again, is there a ratio that compensates for that at birth? So are there more males born than females? And the answer Michael is no. And that's because in the adult population there are fewer males than there are females. Uh, there cannot be as many males than there are f as there are females because the prides are made up of the females and the youngsters. And then the males, of course, will dominate more than one pride. So we know that our Birmingham boys in this area dominate three prides. The Torchwood Pride, we think, off to the very far eastern side of Torchwood and into the Kruger Park, the Nkuhuma Pride here in J on Juma and then of course the Styx Pride down to the south in Chitwa and Cheetah Plains and sometimes on, on here. And that doesn't happen, that couldn't happen if there was an equal number of males and females. They'd all have to have kind of a tiny postage stamp sized piece of territory. Now what's interesting really is why it should have evolved like that. Why is it that so few males are required? And just about in every species, except the primate species and the birds, I'm just trying to think if there's another one, there might be, I'll, it may or may not come to me, what you find is that there is a skewed adult ratio of very few males uh, to females, and that's because males play almost no part in parenting. Their job is uh, often simply a sperm donor, and sometimes then to maintain a territory for protection of the youngsters. But outside of that, there really is little point in the mammal world of having 
the same number of males as you would females because they're just actually a bit of a drain on society. They don't make any real contribution to the raising of youngsters. Even in elephants that's the case. So even in elephants I think you'll probably find that there's a slightly skewed female-male relationship where there are more females than there are males because males don't actually make any huge contribution to raising the kids and therefore there's no evolutionary pressure for them to survive nearly as long or in the same numbers as the females. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. <laughs>